let's take a trip back in time. Let's take a trip back in time into the Ozarks about 74 years ago and see what it looks like on certain areas of the Ozarks along the White River. Hello everyone, my name is Vincent Anderson and welcome to Ozarks History. And we have been working on a project for the past year and a half where, where I work at, at the Baxter County Library. Uh, it's it, This project's gone much longer than I really anticipated. There's more to it than I anticipated, but truly blessed, just truly blessed. We've had the opportunity to work with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and they've, um, they've given, they've, they've loaned to us their negatives from the construction of the Bull Shoals Dam, uh, the, some of the pictures range anywhere from 19, late 1946 all the way to about 1950, all the way through 1952. Um, boxes of negatives. And the negatives have envelopes, and the, all these negatives are crammed into envelopes and they're labeled. And so we're going through looking at all these negatives and we're laying them down. We're actually taking these, these negatives. Let me show you a negative. I have a negative, I'll be very careful, grab it by the edge. These negatives right here, they're about uh, four and a half by three and a half inches. And we take these negatives, we lay them down on a lit whiteboard in a dark room. Then we take a really good digital camera and we start snapping pictures of the negative. And now the negatives <clears throat> do not really work for us or work with us that well. Some of them are scratched, water damaged, um, artifacts on them. Some of them are rippled because they have, they've had paper clips in them for decades and they're rippled from the paper clips, rubber bands, kind of squishing them down. Um, but we, we, we start working with them, holding them down and we're getting some really good, uh, images of these negatives. And so that's what we're going to go ahead and do. And you know, all this would not be possible, uh, to, the work that we've obtained so far would not be possible without the volunteers at the Baxter County Library. So my hats off to uh, my couple of volunteers who have been working with me over this project. And let's go ahead and take a look at what we got here. So this is a, a train depot down at Cotter, Arkansas. And this is one of the first negatives that we actually took. And as you can see, there's the depot there. The resolution was actually pretty good. Now we're going to take this negative and we're going to put it in software and we're going to turn the negative into a positive or what we call black and white. And here's the black and white photograph. And as you can see, there's going to be some scratches and flaws like up in the sky. There's a couple of them up there. We can brush those out and blend that in with the rest of the sky. But this is a really good negative. And if you look on the right hand side, um, some of the negatives have them written all over them and uh, has the negatives do have reference numbers written on them and letters. This one actually would say BSRR 87, I believe. Yes, BSRR 87. That would be the reference number for uh, BS would be Bull Shows Railroad. And this is number negative 87 that was taken. We're going to take this uh, black and white photograph and then we're going to put it into a different piece of software of artificial intelligence and it will go through and color our negative. And this is what we get. I, I'm just happy with that right there. But then you kind of start looking around thinking, mm, we can correct a few little things. And so I'm one thing that, that was really bugging me because I live down near Cotter, Arkansas. I live about four, four to five miles from Cotter. I do know around this area, the dirt is not always that color. It's a little bit darker. So I decided to take a drive down to Cotter and take a few pictures from the vantage point of where the photographer were, where the photographer was, excuse me. And this is about what we're going to see. And so I'm getting a sample here. I even took a shovel and dug around in the dirt just to make sure I can get the right color. And uh, if you look right here on this photograph right here that I took, I took this in, I believe, in early March. You can see the railroad um, on the left-hand side. It's kind of worn out and beat up and part of it gone. And uh, abandoned. That is from the original old Corps of Engineers uh, where they were laying out and working before they went onto the main track. And so that's that's the remnant of it from 1948, that area right there. 
So let's take these colors and let's put them into sampling and see what we come up with. And this is what we got. And now we're starting to look at the rest of the equipment. And you're, I'm starting to think, well, a couple of you think these things could be a little bit different. What else could we do here? Uh, decided to go in and color the railroad car, the crane, um, the, the people, um, their clothes are a little bit off. Sometimes uh, things just go totally orange when you use artificial intelligence. The colors, if it, they cannot figure it out what's going on, sometimes it just goes reddish orange. You're like, where did that come from? And you got to go in and kind of correct that. And so we went back into the books and looked at uh, color photographs and color samples of the equipment. And this is what we get here. Um, some of the negatives have been damaged and they will not. And in the process, um, as you go through, it will not accept color as easily as other uh, photographs. And so fortunately, this one took the color a little bit better. And we've corrected that. And so now let's just break that up into a little smaller picture so we can get a better look here. And so we have the railroad car and we have two gentlemen inside the car. There's someone's dad or papa up in the railroad car. Someone's standing out supervising what's going on. Then we have someone operating the crane, uh, pulling out the railroad, uh, the rail for the railroad. And they're stacking them up and someone else is grandpa standing out here in his overalls making sure supervising and making sure everything is stacked up straight if you look in the background also you can see the old original train depot um, for cotter for the railroad and again this is june of 1948 so that's a little sampling of what we've been doing and what we're going to start showing in the future. We're going to have a lot of videos coming up and we're going to be showing quite a few negatives going to positives. And then, then I'm going to take a lot of these and process them and put them in color so we can take a look at the Ozarks in color back in history in time. Uh, one of the things we're going to have fun with in the future, which was actually my passion, my, it was, it was the one thing I really wanted to do because of I wanted to get my hands on these negatives for this one purpose. I have a selfish purpose. Okay, here it is. I wanted to take a look at the former cemeteries that were once located underneath the Bull Shoals Lake. And there were 53 cemeteries that were um, all exhumed. Um, did, all the bodies were disinterred. Uh, and they were put somewhere else. I wanted to see those cemeteries. And I wanted to see what they look like. And some of the cemeteries looked like a complete overgrown Ozark ramble. And it, it, it was just cluttered with trees and it, it was a mess. And so for the people who complain about the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, I'm going to stick up for them on this one right here and say, hey, back off. Uh, if it wasn't for the Corps of Engineers going in to these cemeteries, some of them we would have lost and the records, because of what they have done, we still have records. And my hat's off to them. So we're looking forward to showing you some more very soon in the future. So I will see you soon. Thank you for coming by Ozark's History. Bye-bye.